Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the certificates feature built into OS X Server. Now, certificates that are usually associated uh, with a server or any other website that handles web traffic are called SSL certificates, or what that stands for is Secure Socket Layer Certificates. And what those do is those verify the identity of servers that you're connecting with so that you can prove that those servers are who they say they are, that they're not spoofed websites or uh, things that uh, suck you in and you think you're going to your bank's website but you're going to somebody else's website. Now you can usually tell when a, a site uh, has a valid uh, SSL certificate. There's usually a little lock in the corner on the website and it just lets us know that the certificate for the website matches who they say it is and so a lot of times you'll have somebody vouch for that uh, to make that happen and so that's how that works for us and when, sometimes when you go to sites that don't have valid certificates you'll get a warning from your browser saying hey not a valid certificate what do you want to do do you want to accept it or not and now when you come to the server here in our server application there's really uh, a couple of types of uh, SSL certificates the first is a self-signed certificate now a self-signed certificate means there's no one vouching for the identity of that particular server and so when you go to a website that uh, has a self-signed certificate that's when you'll get the warning that says hey no one uh, verifies or vouches for this server we can't identify the identity of the server do you want to proceed and continue or do you want to not go to this website now what you'll see here on our server page right away is you'll see that we do have self-signed certificates that get created when you create your various domain names now the other type is a verified uh, certificate, right? A verified uh, one that's set up, and that's one that's purchased and verified by a third party. Now what happens is, is once you've done that, all of the verification and the encryption happens behind the scenes so that you never have any warnings flash up because they're already val uh, validated. And again, that's when you'll see the lock a lot of times up in the corner of your websites. Now an SSL certificate basically encrypts the traffic going back and forth uh, on a website, and so it keeps those communications secure. So it is a security feature that allows you to stay safe when you're browsing the web and so your server will need those certificates as well if you're planning on uh, doing that and having those sorts of services happen and the SSL certificates uh, are required in order to uh, encrypt communications with things like a calendar and contacts and some of those other services that we've got uh, as well as profile manager and those sorts of things. So what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through how to set this up and so if you look here in the uh, actual server area here uh, you can see that we've got a couple of, uh, of options here. You notice I've got a certificate for server.local and I've got one for the server.toddletoff.com and that's because when I created the server I created a server.local and so when you do that anytime you change your host name your server creates a new set of certificates for that. Now let me just show you what a certificate looks like. I'm just going to go to the server.local and double click on it. And this is what the actual S, uh, SSL certificate looks like. You can see that it's a self-signed certificate. Uh, when you see that it's yellow in server, that means it's self-signed. If it's blue, that means it's verified. You can see it says this certificate has not been verified by a third party, so we know that it hasn't. And then this has all of the details of the various encryption and when the cert, uh, certificate was set up and those sorts of things. Uh, and then if you ever need to renew a certificate, you just come down here and click the Renew button, and what it will do is automatically renew that certificate for you. You can see it's starting to go through the process of doing that for me. Okay, it took a few minutes to renew that, but you can see how it's renewed the certificate now and put it up to today's date, and it shows different times that it expires. So if you ever have a certificate that's expiring, you'd come in here and renew it on this page. Let me just say okay and get rid of that. So again, you notice I got those two certificates there. Now this local one that I just sort of set up for renewal, I don't really need. So what I'm going to do is delete it. Now to get rid of a certificate, you just come down here and you hit the minus. Again, to edit, you can click the pencil. Okay, we just did that. Uh, or I click the minus. So let me just go ahead and make sure I select this one here. We're going to click the minus. It says you sure you want to, it says it's being used to secure services can't be deleted. So if you look up here you can see I've got a custom configuration that's including that certificate. So what I'm going to do is just change the services to this certificate and then I could, should be able to come in here now and actually delete this particular one. Sure you want to delete that? Yes, I'm going to do that. And so now I've deleted that certificate and it's gone. So right now this is the certificate I want because this is my domain name. This is my host name that I've set up and everything's ready to go. Uh, if I ever wanted to add a certificate, I would just click this plus button here to add one. Now before I do that, let me just show you how you secure the services. If I just click this down here and I can say custom, 
what it will do is it will show all the different services that use the SSL certificate, okay, those that I've got available, and which certificate's being used. And so in this case, again, I can uh, change it if I've got more than one certificate or I've got to leave it on this one. And so you can see how that works. I can uh, actually come in here and say none for certain services, you know, and, and then basically once I did that, you come in here and now it'll say custom configuration because I chose uh, to only secure, you know, all but one of them. Or I can just come back in here and it'll secure all of them again. So that's how I choose the certificate. And you can have different certificates for different domains and things like that. Now to add a certificate, again I hit the plus right here, and you notice I've got the option to get a trusted certificate, which I'm going to show you in a minute. That's one that you purchase and is verified. Create a certificate identity or import a certificate. So again, I can import a certificate identity if I've got one from before, or I can create a new one. So let me just hit create a new one to show you what that looks like. So I get this uh, drop down here, I get this pop up that has me create one. And so let's go ahead and go through these steps. So let's say I want to create one for you know my domain here, and I put that in there. And then I've got my identity type, and I can do a self-signed certificate or a root uh, or a leaf. Now, a leaf certificate uh, is just a different type of certificate. It's not root, uh, but it's done by a subordinate certificate authority. Uh, so it's to the user, not just to the different services and such. Or you have a self-signed certificate, which is at root, which is a better certificate to use. Uh, so that'll give you all different kinds there. So I'm just going to use this one for the self-signed root. And now I can choose the type of certificate as well. And you notice here there are various types. I can do a server certificate for SSL, one for a client. I've got one for email. Uh, if I wanted to do a certificate to, to have all my email signed, I can do that in here. I can do one for a VPN client or VPN server and then a code signing certificate. Uh, which is one that um, that I'll show you how we do with the trusted certificates when we try to get one. Or I can do a custom type if I wanted to do that. Uh, the one you'll use the most is SSL server. Uh, so we're just going to leave that alone for the server. Uh, now again, you can override defaults if you wanted to do that. You know, extensions, keychain, that kind of stuff. But we don't need to worry about that. We're going to leave that alone. And then we just say create. And so it's going to say you're about to create a self-signed certificate. Uh, it does not provide the security guarantee of a regular certificate. Uh, and those sorts of things. I'm going to go ahead and just cancel this because I've already got one. Uh, but you get the idea of how you could create one if you needed to do that. So now that we've got this going, let me just show you how to create a trusted uh, certificate. Okay. Now a trusted certificate is where I'm going to purchase one uh, from a particular website. And so what I'm going to do is, uh, let me show you how that works. I'm going to pull up a website here. Uh, this is Namecheap, which offers uh, SSL certificates that you can buy for a, a reasonable price. And so if you come down here, it kind of shows a little bit about their different SSL certificates, kind of what comes through uh, with it, you know, encryption and support and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you look here, you've got different types. You've got a validation one uh, where you're going to, um, you know, validate a particular domain ownership. Uh, you've got one for an organization. You've got one for extended validation. Uh, you also have a domain secured uh, SSL certificate and a brand one. And this would be for like if you've got a particular brand that you want uh, on your particular certificate, you know, Komodo or GeoTrust or whatever. Uh, what we're going to do is the domain secured ones. And you've got the option for a single domain, which would be like our server.toddoltoff.com. Uh, that would be most useful for those of you that are doing a home server but are using a split DNS where you're hosting maybe a website through a, a hosting provider who owns the actual um, name servers uh, for your domain and you're doing a subdomain with your server like like server.toddletuff.com instead of toddletuff.com. Uh, you can do a wildcard and that would be more if you were uh, hosting your own website um, you know, uh, and everything on your server. So your server owns the name um, the name servers like we talked about before you might do a wildcard one and that just means anything that goes in front of toddletoff.com for instance is uh, basically uh, vouched for you have a certificate that covers all of those different uh, different types of things uh, or you can do one for multiple domains where you've got various domains maybe .net, .com you know that kind of thing and uh, you want to have all of those secured uh, so we're to go, let's take a look at the single domain because this will be for most of you that are home users if you wanted to do this. And you can see there for $9 a year, you'd get this uh, Komodo Positive SSL certificate. It's got all the val validation and all that kind of stuff over here. And what will happen is once you purchase this, 
uh, you'll be, um, it'll ask you for a certain code to validate you are who you say you are, and then they'll send you the certificates. So let me show you how that works. Let's assume you bought this. Okay, you're going to buy this. Let me just pop this down, and they're going to ask you for something that validates your server. Well, to do that, you come in here and hit the plus. You get a trusted certificate, and you're going to go through this process of, of uh, getting what you need uh, in order to buy that certificate. So we're going to say next. And so in here, you're going to put in your host name. And so in our drop down, we've already got it. A uh, contact email address. Let me just kind of make one up there. Say uh, info at server.toddoltoff.com. Let's say organization. Let's just say server. Uh, we don't have a department. Uh, let's say IT. We're going to make up a city, you know, Acme. Uh, let's say California. Okay, so once we get all our information in there and you want to put the right info in there, I'm going to say next. And what it's going to do is give us this code. And you can see this gobbledygook in here. You can see all of this different information. Well, this is a code that you need uh, to get your certificate request. And so you will copy all this information and save it. And then you would paste it into a form that they give you. And that's what they would use then to issue you your certificate. Now, you need to make sure that your um, information is correct. So if it's server.toddletoff.com, that's the only thing that will be verified. If you put www in front of it, it will not encrypt that as well and so you would need more of a wild card if you wanted to do those multiple things all right but that's what you would do and if we say finish you'll notice that i've got this placeholder right here that says the certificate is pending okay because that's what i'm waiting for the certificates that they give me if i just double click on this you'll notice i get this screen here once i get those certificates i just drag them in here okay and they all get set up in here and then they're ready to go okay at that point then my servers are there I say okay and then the certificates will be all set up and you notice it has a blue boundary around it which means that it would be verified okay and that's how that would work uh, again I can I could edit the certificate request if I wanted to you know are you sure you want to edit the certificate that's if I want to change the information if I got it wrong or I can save the code that I had earlier if I forgot to get it to paste it in to get my certificate so I'll say okay now, there are times when you may get, uh, you know, an intermediate certificate that you have to take care of yourself because maybe server won't handle it. Uh, in order to do that, you want to come into Keychain Access under System and Certificates here, and you just want to drag that in here. And you can see where I've got my certificate already in here, the self-signed one for server with my private key uh, already in there. But that's where these certificates would show up. And again, they'd be more of the blue verified kind. You can see it says the certificate's valid for this particular one that I've got. Let me just put that down. So that gives you an idea of how the uh, SSL certificates work for OS X Server. Uh, hopefully that gives you a good idea on how to get those things set up and running. Uh, as you'll see, once we do Open Directory, we'll also get an Open Directory certificate in here as well uh, if you choose to use that service. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.